The German Greens have just signed an agreement to join the German government for the first time since 2005. They're a major coalition partner, meaning that they have a huge amount of influence over domestic legislation. It's likely then that the environment will be a main focus in German politics over the next few years. In fact, you should check out TLDR EU if you haven't already. It's linked down below, along with the link to the video mentioned. Over there we discuss all kinds of European issues, from Poland's border crisis, the new Euro notes, Sweden's seven-hour Prime Minister, and Russia's military on Ukraine's border. Anyway, check it out and subscribe to help us out. Regardless, over here in the UK though, the Greens are, well, not doing really well. They currently have a single MP, rendering them essentially powerless in Westminster. It's a similar story across the rest of Europe. Green parties in France and Italy have failed to win a single seat in the lower houses. This is despite the fact that the environment has been steadily climbing up voters' lists of priority. So let's have a look at why the Greens are so electorally unsuccessful in the UK, some possible reasons for it, some possible solutions, and why the German Greens have done so well this year. The first thing to note is that the Greens' one seat is actually not a great demonstration of their popularity across the UK. As this graph shows, the Greens have regularly achieved more than 1% of the vote nationally, peaking in recent years at 3.8% of the national vote in 2015. If seats were allocated proportionally to national vote share, this would amount to about 25 Green MPs, but the UK's electoral system leaves them short-changed. They have a single MP, Caroline Lucas. This is the first thing that's holding the UK Greens back, first past the post. Essentially, first past the post disadvantages smaller parties without specific geographical appeal. Both because it disproportionately reduces their representation in Parliament, the Greens ended up with just 0.15% of seats despite garnering 3.8% of the popular vote, about 25 times more votes than seats, but also because it encourages tactical voting. Tactical voting is where would-be Green Party voters instead vote for another party that essentially has a chance of winning their constituency. Essentially, if your constituencies are two-horse race between Labour and the Conservatives, voting for the Green Party isn't going to make a difference to the final result. It'll just be a wasted vote. Instead, you might decide to switch your vote to your preferred party between Labour and the Conservatives. And there's a fair bit of evidence to suggest that this is happening. Polling from the Electoral Reform Society found that about a third of voters voted tactically in 2019. A YouGov poll from September this year shows that of those who voted Labour in 2019, 66% of them had a favourable view of the Green Party. This is 56% for those who voted Liberal Democrat. Additionally, YouGov asked Labour and Lib Dem voters out of 10, with 0 being that they would never consider voting for them and 10 being that they would consider voting for them, how likely they would be to vote Green. 40% of those who voted Labour in 2019 gave a rating of 7 and up, with 15% of all Labour voters giving a score of 10. For Liberal Democrat voters, 38% gave a rating of 7 and up, with 13% of voters giving a score of 10. These two facts, that a lot of voters vote tactically and that a lot of Lib Dem and Labour voters have a favourable view of the Greens, suggests that would-be Green voters do vote tactically when it comes to general elections. This is probably why, in the 2019 European elections, which uses a form of proportional representation with multi-member constituencies, the Greens won an impressive 12% of the vote. Similarly, in the 2021 local elections, the Greens won a significant number of seats, although it's hard to compare these results to national results. The point is that there's evidence to suggest that the Greens do suffer from tactical voting, and this might explain their disproportionately poor results at the first past the post general elections. This is something that the German Greens don't have to deal with, because German federal elections use a more proportional alternate member system. Nonetheless, first past the post and its deleterious effect on smaller parties can't completely explain the gap between the German and UK Greens. Whatever the true support of the UK Greens, it's unlikely to be as high as 15% won by German Greens at the German federal elections, and definitely not as high as the dizzying heights of 25% where the German Greens were polling just a few months ago. So why are the German Greens markedly more popular than their UK counterparts? Well, it might be partly to do with policy. While the two parties have pretty similar policy platforms, 
They both want to raise taxes to increase investment in renewables, they're both anti-nuclear power, and they've both at times been pacifists, the German Greens are a little more centrist. For example, while the German Greens originally started out as a pacifist movement and are still unconvinced by NATO's 2% spending target, they've now adopted a more mainstream position on defence, accepting the need for some military spending and even insisting that Europe needs to take more responsibility for its own security instead of relying on the US. The UK Greens, on the other hand, want to scrap Trident and get rid of the Ministry of Defence entirely and replace it with a Ministry for Security and Peace, which would be mostly focused on climate change. We're not saying that this would necessarily be a bad idea, all we're saying is that the German Greens' position is more electorally palatable than the UK Greens here. Another factor is the UK Greens' disunity. The UK Greens has a structure whereby the leader doesn't really have the power to set party policy. They're more of a spokesperson for the members. The leader has no more power than any ordinary member. They simply have more influence. While this is very democratic and gives power to the rank and file members, it's also not great for party unity. The UK Greens have spent much of this year arguing about trans rights and they've even fought a leadership election over it. This is not a good look electorally for two reasons. First, fractured parties tend to struggle electorally, and second, it detracts from central issues of the environment and smaller parties tend to do better when they focus on a single issue, as UKIP did in the mid-2010s when they focused squarely on Euroscepticism. So you get the point, the UK Greens hold more extreme, less electorally palatable policies and are internally divided. It's also worth noting, however, that the German Greens used to be exactly the same. The German Greens, after all, used to be full-on pacifists and were constantly bickering between their more left-wing fundy and more moderate Rielo factions, in part thanks to their own membership-led super-democratic internal structure. So, what changed? Well, it's probably partly the fact that the German Greens had to actually go into government. In 1998, after winning just 6.7% of the vote, the Greens went into a governing coalition with the SDP, and they've been in and out of government ever since, if not in the federal government, then at least in one of Germany's 16 regional governments. Today, the Greens are part of 11 regional governments in coalition with everyone from Die Linke to the FDP. Being in government has forced the German Greens to give up their more extreme policies, unify around actual policies, and has also demonstrated to the electorate that the Greens are actually capable of governing. This is an opportunity the UK Greens have never had, because first past the post doesn't encourage coalitions at the national level, but also because the UK has a more centralised political system than Germany, which means the UK Greens don't have the opportunity to govern at the regional level in the same way that the German Greens have. Essentially, the thesis we're tentatively proposing here is that the German Greens have had to become more mainstream because they've been given the opportunity to govern, whereas the UK Greens still behave a bit more like a pressure group because, well, the UK's political system means that they don't have the opportunity to be a governing political party. Basically, it's not entirely the UK Green Party's fault that they're not ruling the country like the German counterparts. It's mainly down to the UK's electoral system. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, then let us know in the comments below. We've only really touched on the power of the Green Party. We haven't looked at whether they can be successful simply due to their influence. So if you'd like to see that video, you know what to do. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers for making videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description below.